what I want to do is I want to show you how these quadrature uh, photo interrupters work and uh, I'll show you some Arduino code and how you can salvage these parts and use them for linear motion measurement. All right, so let's get started. I got this part out of the printer and uh, poking around the back, I could find the ground plane pretty easily, so I scraped off the solder mask and put on a ground wire. And then these two resistors are 300 ohms in parallel, and they clearly go to the LED. So I knew this was positive. And there were two pins left, and so I just put on uh, two wires so I could scope the outputs. And it turns out that these are the quadrature outputs of the photo interrupter. So what we'll do is we'll hook this up to power and put these on a scope, and I'll show you what the quadrature uh, outputs from the uh, the photo interrupter look like when I run the uh, encoder strip through. Okay, so I've got the uh, the photo interrupter hooked up to power. Uh, I don't know if it's a 3.3 volt part or a 5 volt part, so I just have it set at 4 volts, and that's enough to uh, uh, operate the unit. I think there's some open collector pull-ups on the output of the photo diode here, so um, everything is fine. And I'm taking the two uh, quadrature outputs, and they go to my scope. And then I'm just going to take this uh, encoder strip and I'm going to slide it back and forth inside the unit. And then I'll show you what the traces look like. So if we go up to the scope, so now I'm going to try to uh, do everything while I operate the camera. As I move the strip one way, you can see that the uh, green trace, when I, when I pull on the strip, the green trace leads the yellow trace. And when I push on the strip, the green trace lags the yellow trace. So not only can you measure how far the strip has moved with this system, you can also measure what direction it's moving. And this lets the printer uh, know where the print head is at all times, regardless of if there's a jam or something stalls, because it's not dependent on the step from a stepper motor actually occurring. So anyway, uh, let me turn the uh, camera over here just a little bit. And, you know, it's quite a fine strip, and I can... show you the frequencies that I get. I can get up to a couple kilohertz if I pull the strip fast enough. I'm getting about oh, almost two kilohertz there. So anyway, uh, now I'll show you how to hook this up to an Arduino and uh, show you some simple interrupt code to read the uh, quadrature signals. So what's going on is that every time uh, this uh, the black strips on this strip block the photo detector in the uh, photo interrupter, you get a transition from high to low on the in-phase line, the I line. And the Q line is the quadrature line, and it's set up to be 90 degrees out of phase with the I line. And depending on the direction of the strip, you will either get the, uh, the Q line to lead the I line or to lag it by 90 degrees. And so this lets us determine the direction of the strip. And so um, to get the highest uh, resolution out of your linear encoder, what you really want to do is you want to trigger an interrupt on your microcontroller. Uh, I've got the unit hooked up to an Arduino, and we'll get to that in a minute. But um, you want to trigger an interrupt on the I and the Q lines. Um, but for simplicity, we're only going to use one interrupt line since the basic Arduino only has two uh, interrupts in the uh, Arduino language, you can, you know, bit fiddle and get interrupts on pretty much any pin. But uh, to keep things simple, we're going to use one interrupt. So we're going to interrupt every time there's a change on the I line. And you'll notice that um, when the strip is going in one direction, every time there's an edge on the I line, the level of the I and the Q are the same. So here they're high and here they're low. So um, for direction A, let's say, you'll find that I and Q are equal on an edge change on the I line. If you're going in the other direction, you'll find that whenever there's an edge change, the I and Q lines have opposite uh, signs. So here we're low and high, and here we're high and low. So all we have to do is trigger on an interrupt for an edge change on the I line, and if I and Q are the same, we increment our counter, and if I and Q are different, we decrement our counter. And so uh, doing that, we can have interrupt routine that will keep track of the counts on this strip, and this will keep track of the position of the strip. So I've taken the, uh, the photo interrupter out of the printer, and I've hooked it up to the Arduino. So I've plugged into 5 volts and ground, and the two interrupt pins are 2 and 4. So uh, what we'll call the I line is this, this wire here, and it goes to pin 2, and pin 4 
can have interrupts, but we're only going to use the interrupt on pin 2. So uh, every time I changes, we trigger an interrupt, and then we compare these two wires. And if they're the same, we increment, and if they're different, we decrement. And that gives us an interrupt-driven uh, way to keep track of the encoder. So let me uh, show you the code and then a, a quick demo. Okay, here's the code we're going to use to read the linear encoder that we pulled out of our printer. So uh, we start out and we define uh, two uh, uh, constants here to let us know what pins we've attached our hardware to. So pin 2 gets the in-phase line and pin 4 is attached to the quadrature line. Okay, and then we're going to uh, use a variable to keep track of the position of the encoder strip. And uh, we're just going to use an integer count but we have to declare it volatile because it can be changed outside of functions. So other things like the interrupt, for example, in this case, will change it. So we have to let the compiler know not to optimize away the ability for the variable to change uh, elsewhere. So then we go into our standard setup routine uh, for the Arduino. Uh, we turn on the serial port at a uh, high baud rate. Uh, we initialize the count to zero. And we set uh, the two pins to be inputs. Uh, there's pull-ups already on that hardware I yanked out of the printer, so there's no need to play with the uh, uh, pull-up uh, resistors. Uh, then we attach our interrupt handler to interrupt number 0, which, if you look at the Arduino documentation, corresponds to pin 2. So handler number 0, or interrupt number 0, is on pin 2, and every time there's a change event on that pin, so if it goes from high to low or low to high, this function gets called automatically. So let's go to the uh, handler, and then we'll come back to the loop, which is very simple. Well, we'll just talk about the loop now. All we do is print out the variable count, and we delay a little bit, and we just do this over and over again. So we're just printing out this variable, and the uh, interrupt handler does all the work of updating count. So let's go to the handler. Um, what we do here is we read uh, in the encoder I pin, and we read the encoder Q pin. And if they're the same, as we discussed uh, a second ago, that means we're moving in, in one direction, and so we increment the count. If they were different, we decrement the count, and that's it. Uh, so uh, I'll just say a few things about interrupt handlers uh, here. Uh, it would be preferable to, uh, instead of using digital read to get these values, to actually access the ports directly. That would save you uh, quite a bit of time. I think these, these uh, uh, functions are, are pretty bloated. And so uh, just accessing the ports directly will save you a lot of time in your interrupt handler. Because in general, you want interrupt handlers to be very fast and efficient. Um, the other thing I need to point out is that because count is not a byte, reading this variable is not atomic. And so while serial.println is actually looking at this variable to print out the value, the value can change. And um, that's not a big deal in this case because um, we're not doing anything with a variable. But you can get uh, bad values when you're reading multi-byte uh, values back from the interrupt handler. And so there's a couple things you can do about that. You can disable interrupts around uh, this, which may cause trouble in uh, Arduino 1.0 because I think they use interrupts to actually do the, the, the serial printing. Um, or you can set a flag that the interrupt handler looks at and the interrupt handler will not change count while that flag is set. So the synchronization between multiple threads uh, can get really complicated, and I'm just ignoring the issue here. And uh, just looking at the performance of this, uh, I don't see it coming up uh, while I'm playing with it. But if you were going to put this in an embedded system that's going to Mars, uh, this is totally a no-no. So that's the code, and now let's uh, look at the example. Okay, so we've got our... Uh encoder strip inside of our little photo interrupter and I've got it hooked up to the Arduino and it's hooked up to the code and it's running and I'm just going to slide the strip back and forth. It's a little hard to do while I operate the camera. So I slide to the left, the numbers become negative. I slide to the right, the numbers become positive and I need to keep the strip kind of centered in the photo interrupter. So if I put it here, zero is kind of right with my knuckles under the numbers and I can go left and right back to zero, right left, right, left. So anyway, I uh, hope this was a useful demonstration of how you can uh, steal linear encoders from uh, an old printer and uh, how you can use them with the Arduino to make very precise position measurements. All right, thanks.